own a WordPress website or you build WordPress websites for clients, you must, must, must make sure that a backup has been taken of the website. WordPress has a lot of vulnerabilities. It gets hacked all of the time. Sites go down, servers crash, updates go wrong, and then of course there are the infamous user errors. So this is why it is very, very important to make sure that you have a fresh backup of the website. That way, in the event anything happens, you can quickly restore the website within a matter of minutes, not hours or days, resulting in a loss of traffic, revenue, or even the site's reputation. That's why today I'm gonna show you how to take a complete backup of the WordPress files, database, plugins, and themes. I'm gonna show you how to schedule these backups so that they happen automatically without you having to go in and do a thing. And I'm also gonna walk you through how to quickly restore your website within minutes, even if you have never done any of this before, you'll really be able to do all of this within a matter of minutes. And to do all of this, we are going to be using the free WordPress Up Draft Plus plugin. And there are several of these backup plugins available, but I have chosen to specifically use this one because it has been tested on over 3 million websites. People love it because it gets the job done and done well, and they can get it all done in a matter of minutes. It also uses less server resources, which is just code for it gets it done fast. And it also allows you to set up automatic backups because we're all so busy these days, we don't often stop to think about taking backups of the website. But also, not only can you back up the website, you can restore it as well, which you can't do in all of the plugins. So if this sounds good, let's go ahead and jump on over to the WordPress dashboard. We'll get Updraft Plus installed, and then I'll show you how to set it up in just a couple of minutes. Now, the first thing we need to do is install Updraft Plus. So we're gonna head on over to the plugins menu here and click on Add New. Now we're gonna do a quick search for Updraft Plus. We will click on install now. And once it has been successfully installed, we will activate the plugin. And now that it has been activated, we can simply scroll down here to Updraft Plus and we can select settings. And this is where we will go to the dashboard. Now, if you want to access this later on, you can come over here to the settings menu and simply click on Updraft Plus backups. So here we are on the Updraft Plus backup dashboard. Now, what we're gonna be doing is walking through these tabs right here, just so you know where everything is, what you need to do, and have you up and running here in just the next couple of minutes. Now, if you want to just take a super quick, simple backup without touching anything else, you can actually just go right here to this big blue backup now button. This is just gonna take a simple backup and send it right over to your server. Now that is not ideal. We don't want to store our backups on our server just in case there's ever an issue with our host or there's any server issues that our backups don't get lost there. So it's definitely best to use a remote storage destination. We'll talk about that here and we'll look at some options in just a moment. So since we want to set this up properly, make sure that our backups are never gonna be at risk, what we'll do is we're gonna leave this screen alone here for just a minute. We're gonna come over to the migrate slash clone tab here. Now, some of these are premium features to clone your website. For instance, they have updraft clone here. So if you don't want to test things, if you're making changes, let's say to your live site, you don't wanna actually test those on your live site, you can simply clone your website and then test the changes there before for making those changes go live. So that is a really helpful feature of their premium version here. And then down here, this is going to let you migrate a website. So let's say you want to duplicate a site and then put it over on another domain. This is going to let you do that with their migrator tool. But again, these are some of the premium options. So what we're gonna do is just skip on over this to our settings tab. And this is where we actually set the backups. Now this is really important because this is where we're going to automate the backups so that way we make sure that they happen. So what we're gonna do is we want to make sure that we are backing up both the website files and the databases. Those aren't gonna work one without the other. So what we wanna do here is we wanna go over and select how often do we want the backups to be taken. Now, this really depends on how often you update your website. If you have a website, let's say it is a news website and it's constantly being updated, well then maybe you wanna do a backup every two hours. But remember, you have to store these backups or you have to go in and then delete the ones that you don't need. So if you only update your website once a week and you only have one new post a week, well then you don't need to do 
do that every two hours. It's gonna be a lot for you to store. So it really depends on how often you're updating your website. In this case, we are going to select weekly. Now it's asking how many backups do we want to retain? So if let's say we have two backups and then now we're adding another one, well then they can go ahead and get rid of the oldest one here. And we're gonna do the same schedule here for our database backup. So now that we have done that, we're gonna scroll down here to the next part, which is to choose our remote storage destination. So when a backup is taken, where do we want it to be automatically stored? So you can use Updraft Plus, for instance, they have their own storage that you can pay extra for. They have Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, Amazon S3. Now, some of these are going to be premium features as well. So for instance, if you want your backup sent to Microsoft OneDrive, you're gonna notice here, it's going to tell you that this is an add-on. And so you can either pay for the premium version or just follow this link to get that add-on. But in this case, we can use Dropbox, Amazon S3, Google Drive, any of these for free here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Amazon S3. Now notice when you click that, it is going to create a drop down here where we actually have to insert our account information. So since I'm using Amazon S3, we need the access key and secret key, and it is asking me for a location. So I have to come up with a location. So I'm gonna call this the site name with backups here, and then we'll switch over to the Amazon account. We will grab the access ID. We will pop that in here, and we'll grab the secret access key. We'll pop that in there, and now we can test the settings to make sure it actually works. We wanna make sure that that connection is there. So here we have it, S3 settings test result is a success. We access the bucket and we're able to create files within it. The communication with Amazon S3 was encrypted. So we're good to go. So now if we go on down to the next section here, Updraft is asking us what they should actually include and exclude from the backups. And so here we wanna make sure that we are including plugins, themes, and anything that has been uploaded in the backup. Now this is also showing us what we can exclude. So if there's been any backups, for instance, that are being stored there on the server, we don't want those backups backed up. <laughs> so now we can add an exclusion rule here as well. So if there's other files or directories that you don't want to be included in that backup, Backup for whatever reason. Let's say there's something you're just storing there, but you don't really need, it's not essential to your website, then you can exclude it. It'll just keep the size of your backup much smaller. And the same thing, if you want to include any other directories that are found with inside WP-Content where all your content is housed, then you want to leave that checked here. And again, you can exclude anything that is found with inside this directory that you don't want backed up. Now coming down here, the only other thing you may want to do is email and you can check this box here so that way a basic report is sent to you. They do have a more detailed report with their premium version, but I at least like to have the basic report sent. That way I just know that it's been run and when I see the email, I remember it's been done. That way if too much time goes by and I'm like, hey, I haven't received one of those emails, I know that I need to come and check something. Now what we'll do is we will click save changes and that's it, we're gonna be set up here. So now if we popped back over to backup and restore, we can see that the files and the database are scheduled to be backed up at this date and this time. It gives you the current date and time so you know that it's about to run. Now you'll notice that this is several hours from now and the reason is when you are using the free version, it's going to pick the time. So you can give them the interval in the settings here. You can just say, hey, I wanna do this once a week, but they will pick the time. If you want to say, I want it done right now, or I want to schedule this for six o'clock in the morning or six o'clock at night or 7.02, whatever time you specifically want, that's gonna be a premium version. But otherwise, they'll just pick the time. And I know that here in the next four hours, this is going to automatically run for me. So if you have done just this, then you're good to go. You can stop right here. I do wanna show you though a couple of other things just so you are aware of everything within this plugin. Now under advanced tools, notice how here it says, unless you have a problem, you can and completely ignore everything here. And so that's usually advisable is just to leave this section alone. But a couple of things that I will show you here is export and import settings. If for any reason that you wanted to export the settings, let's say you have the passwords and 
everything for Amazon S3 or Google Drive already stored here. You can export the settings and then you can come back to this same spot on another website and import the settings. That way it's all set up for you. So that could be helpful for you, but again, it's very easy and quick to set this up. So you might just go ahead and set it up for a new site. Now you also have the wipe settings. If for whatever reason you needed to wipe out all the settings that you could do that, probably not going to do that. But also here, I wanted to let you know that you can reset the tour. So let's say you ever wanted to reset this tour and we'll go back over here to the dashboard. You'll see that the tour now here is going to restart. So if you want them to walk you through what we've done, you can access that there. Now, lastly, we have the premium extensions here. And as I'm sure you can guess, this is if you are interested in the premium version. So this gives you a breakdown of what you get in the free version and what you get in the premium version. As you've seen here, you have everything you really are going to need in the free version. The premium version definitely does have some benefits to it. So it really just depends on, again, what your needs are here. So one of the things that will allow you to do is set the time to be able to do the backup that we looked at, but it also allows you to only backup changes to your files that has been made since the last backup. Now think about that. It's not taking a full backup of your entire website files and all of the databases, everything involved. It's literally, if you have just made a change by uploading an image, it's only going to back up that image. So that's going to make your backups much faster and much easier for you there. So that is one of the biggest benefits. Now you'll ought to be able to automatically take a backup of a site before any updates to plugins, themes, or even the WordPress core. So whenever these updates happen, this can really cause changes in your website. So if you ever need to be able to restore your website to pre-update, that is automatically going to make sure that you have a backup before any of those updates automatically run. So you'll also be given more options to remote cloud storage. You'll be able to clone the website as we looked at to move it from one website to another. You'll be able to get support, get more detailed reports. You'll be able to restore backups from other plugins if for whatever reason that wasn't working. Working, and they even give you some storage space where you can house your backups there. So there are a lot of benefits to using the premium version. But again, we're just looking at what you can do with the free version here by just being able to back this up. So what we'll do is we'll come back here later and take a look at this backup. All right, it has now been a few hours and our backup has run for us. So we can see here in the last log message, the backup succeeded and was completed and we have the date and time right here. And we also can see now in the existing backup section, the files right here. As you can see, we have the database, plugins, themes, uploads, others, all right here. And as you can see up here under files and database, since we earlier under settings, asked them to automatically run a backup schedule for us every single week. We now can see seven days later that we have a scheduled backup to run. So once this runs in a week, we will see that second backup appear down here in this list. So now in the event that you ever need to restore your website, I want you to see how easy it is. Now you have two options. One, you can restore this using the Updraft Plus plugin, or you can restore this manually. Now, if you can, you just want to restore it using the plugin because, well, that's going to be quick and easy for you to do. But there may be the case where you cannot actually access this dashboard here, and so that's going to be hard for you to do, and you're going to need to do it manually. But let's take a look at how this is done. So let's say we do need to restore the website. What we're going to do is we're going to head over here to the Restore button. Now, as a quick note, you can click on any of these and it will just download that part of the backup for you. But actually what I want to do here real quick, knowing that the backup is done, is I want to jump over to my remote cloud storage and I want to make sure the files are there. So I do see that all of the files have been created, all the backups are here, so I can feel confident that they are at least there. So now what I want to do is I want to head over and I want to click on restore. So the first step here is it's going to ask me to choose the components that I want to restore. And I want to go ahead and restore all of these and we'll click next. It's going to retrieve if it needs to and prepare the backup files to go ahead and restore the website. 
Now that the files have been prepared, it gives us a confirmation here, letting us know the backup archive files have been successfully processed, and we can go ahead and press restore again to proceed. If Updraft Plus finds any errors or any issues going on, it's going to list those right here so those can be taken care of. Otherwise, if you receive a success message like this, you will simply go ahead and click restore and it will restore your files for you. You'll be able to watch the progress and then at the bottom of the screen, you will see a restore successful message there. If there are any problems, it will let you know what is going on and what you can do. If for any reason it doesn't work, and it usually does, this is a usually a very successful plugin, but there could be something that just went wrong for whatever reason. If that is the case, then you would need to do a manual restore. That sounds way scarier than it is, but this is simply you installing a fresh version of WordPress. You're gonna get rid of everything that is on your website, install WordPress, and then once you have a new, fresh, clean WordPress installation, you will install Updraft Plus, just like we did at the beginning of this video, and then you will import there the files that have been backed up in your remote cloud storage, and that will restore those files for you. And then your website will be all ready to go. So that is everything. As promised, this is quick and easy to set up, to get your backups, and to be able to restore it with just a few clicks in the event that you ever need to. So with it being this easy, there is really no excuse not to make sure you have a fresh backup of your website. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask down in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please do consider sharing it. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you are notified as soon as new tutorials are out. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.